so recently, Hexrays released the CTF challenge, and apparently traps have been laid along the way. We'll see what that means in a minute. But the reason I'm creating this video is because I thought that this challenge is a great way to demonstrate path-driven symbolic execution. But what is path-driven symbolic execution, I hear you cry. Well, allow me to demonstrate. Let's switch over to Binary Ninja. Okay, so here's the challenge. I won't go over it too much in detail, but I'll give a brief overview. So we have a binary which takes in a password as an argument, and it will show an image if the password is good or bad. So here we have a check on part of the password, and this will be our first constraint. And then here we have another check on part of the password. This will be our second constraint. And then here we have another check on our password. Guess what? This will be our third constraint. And here we have a loop which does some partial decryption. And we don't actually need to execute this loop because if we were to do so, this would cause state explosion. And this is probably one of the traps mentioned on the web page. So if we look below that, we have a fourth check on the password. This will be our fourth constraint. Then we have another loop doing more encryption. And once again, we don't need to execute this because afterwards we have the fifth and final check on the password. And this will be our fifth constraint. So what we want to do is get up until this point so that we've collected all the constraints on our password, but without executing the loops, because these loops will cause state explosion. So SE Ninja is a great tool to do this because we can drive the path along a single state and I will demonstrate this now. Okay, let's switch to the disassembly view and then the graph view. Now, if we scroll up to the top, we can find the string copy of our password and it's right here and RSI will be a pointer to our buffer. So this is a good location to start doing our symbolic execution from. So let's start up SE Ninja Now, the first step is that we want to set RSI to our symbolic buffer. So let's create this buffer first. We'll call it password. The size will be 24. And we'll set the constraints as an ask string. Click OK. Now we need to assign the register RSI to our buffer. We can do that just here, like so. And now we're ready to start doing the symbolic execution, but we're going to be doing it in a path-driven way, which means we want to follow a dedicated path. And SE Ninja is really good for this because we have full control over the way the symbolic execution is done, and we can use the step command. So let's begin the symbolic execution manually like so. We'll step and we'll continue stepping up until the first branch. When we reach this path, our states are going to split we now have one state at the bad password location and one state at the good password location. So let's switch back to the good location. We can do that just here. And now let's continue driving along this path. Okay, now we reached the second check of the password. And as you can see here, we have created another state split. So now we have an additional split at the bad location. However, we're currently still on the good path, so we shall continue to execute from here. So once again, we're at the bad location because our paths have split. So let's switch back and continue on. Now, here it gets interesting because we've reached the loop and we don't actually need to execute this because we know that later on, there are further checks on the password and we need to collect this data. And if we were to execute this loop now symbolically, we would get what's known as a state explosion because this loop executes over 7,000 times or something. So what we can do is skip over this loop to drive our path forward. And we do this by coming to the menu and selecting set IP to new address. So we'll just skip over this loop. And now let's continue our execution. Once again, our paths have split. Let's go back to the good location and continue on stepping. In fact, now we've reached the second loop and we also don't need to execute this loop. So we can drive our path forward by repeating the same process. Uh, 
and let's continue to drive the path forward. We shall return back to our good state, which is just here. And actually now we've reached the point in the program where we have all necessary information to generate an expression. And what we can do is we can tell SC Ninja to try and solve this for us. And it's as simple as asking SC Ninja to do this for us. So we select our symbolic buffer and then we choose evaluate as bytes and ta-da, here is our password. And I thought that this was a really cool way to demonstrate one of the features of SC Ninja. Being able to control our paths, to visualize our paths, to see the different states and to switch between them. It just gives us so much flexibility. And what we can also do now is we can take the address of our symbolic buffer and we can take a look in the memory viewer. The dots mean symbolic, so we'll select our buffer here and then we can make it concrete. And there it is in our symbolic memory. And with the user interface, it's very easy to see all the different states as well. So that concludes my first reverse engineering video. Over and out.